that's kind of always has to be the first step. I'm going to create a sales order first. And I'm going to select a customer, whichever it is. I'll, I'll pick a customer. And then I pick a couple of items. It could be a unique item or it could be um, a generic item that you sell. That doesn't really matter so much. In the sales order, in the sales order, um, in this case, we have multiple inventory sites turned on. So we'll just turn that on. So in the sales order, I'm going to save it. And I have to make sure that the purchase order does not get created by itself. You cannot go into vendors and go to create purchase order. You cannot do that. You got to go into the sales order and you have to press create purchase order. And the reason for that is because this sales order number is going to be copied into the memo automatically. So when I click on create purchase order and then I put all allowed items, whatever it happens to be, uh, QuickBooks is going to create a purchase order and then I get to pick uh, the vendor that is for. And uh, one thing that's not turned on in this particular um, template is the customer job. So I'm going to click on formatting up here and click on customize da la uh, data layout. And I want to make sure that in the columns section, I have turned on in my template uh, the customer uh, job that this uh, order is for. So I'm going to turn on customer and then click on OK. And then I can have in my, actually, this might be a custom field, actually. So we'll, that wasn't a good, uh, a good idea. That was actually a bit, bit confusing, actually. There was a custom field, happened to be called customer, which is the wrong one. Good thing that showed up so you can see it. There should be one called customer job, which is near the top. And we're going to go ahead and turn that on and then click on OK. And you're expecting a couple of things. You're expecting the purchase order in itself to have every single item connected to the customer and job. And if you have a job, it becomes easier. There's no way to enter the sales order number that this purchase order is linked to at the item level, but you can get down here where it says memo, it says sales order number, um, and, and you can use that as a follow-up. So then you can use that number, copy and paste it in the find box, and then you can find it. I would, I would take it one step further and I would actually take that PO number, copy it. I would save, in this case, the purchase order. And because I created the purchase order from the sales order, I would then go into my memo and type here PO and paste the PO number. So I went, so I kind of went the extra step and I pasted the PO number in the, in the sales order so I can have reference to it. I can't link them together. It's not a possibility to link them together. I can do that. There is a field, like a, a, a default field called PO number on a sales order, but that's not for your own PO to order to your vendor. That essentially would be, if you are your customer's vendor, it would be the PO that they would send to you. So your POs, that's what the customer will give you, a random PO number there, which is, which is them sending a PO to you and you are their vendor essentially. So don't confuse one with the other. So. You can do that like this. If it happens to be that you break down the sales order into multiple purchase orders, let's say, for example, we buy Anchor Adhesive from one vendor and then we buy Drum from a different vendor, or let me just pick another item here altogether and kind of explain that. Let's say, for example, I'm also going to have this pump and we'll have, let's say, 17 of these pumps. And it happens to be that I, that I don't, in fact, order everything from one vendor. Then what you can do is instead of using uh, the memo down here, you create a custom field for the item called vendor PO number. So I'm going to go into the list menu and go into item list. And I'm going to double click on any of the items just so I can get into my custom fields area. I'm going to click on custom fields and um, I'm going to create a new custom field. I'm just going to create a new one here and we're going to order. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'm going to use the first line for this. I'm going to call this vendor PO. So I'm just calling it vendor PO. In this case, we can do vendor PO number and then make this a, uh, the type of text that will make it, will make it a whole numbers only. Okay, so we're creating a custom field, an internal custom field called vendor PO for us to track uh, these uh, uh, POs from a sales order. We hit OK, and then we hit OK, and then we hit OK. Then I close that and then go back to my sales order. 
I'm going to click on formatting and then can click on customize data layout. I'll click on make copy here to make a copy of the current uh, template. And then here where it says uh, columns, I'm going to go ahead and enable the field called vendor PO number. Uh, right here, vendor PO number. I'm going to enable that. So just enable it in my template. Hit OK. All right, perfect. And then let's say that I'm going to uh, create multiple purchase orders from the sales orders. And I want to link the items based on who I'm ordering it from. So the way I would do that, or possibly the best way to do that, is I'm going to start by saving my, my sales order. And let's say the first two go to one vendor and the third one go to a different vendor. So I'm going to do it, do it again. Click on Create Purchase Order. This time I'm going to select Create Purchase Order for Selected Item and then click OK. And then I would click, let's say, the first two, which happen to be Preferred vend Vendor, uh, Kaler's Hardware and uh, Adhesives. Click OK. Then the, the PO gets created. Notice that the original sales, sales order number gets tagged in the bottom in the memo section, which is what we want. And then we got the PO number, PO number 45. I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to click on save and close and hit yes. Okay. And then what that would do is now will send me back to my sales order. Then I'm going to just paste vendor or PO number 45 in the vendor PO section. Um, and then I'm going to click on save, kind of just save my work, make sure I don't lose anything in the process. Now I'm going to create a separate uh, a PO number for the third item. So I'm going to click on create purchase order. And then I'm going to click purchase order for selected items, then click on OK. And then I would select the third item. Yeah, I wish, I, I wish there was a more automated way to do this, but you have to do them kind of in batch. So you kind of do them based on preferred vendor. It would be cool if you could see the preferred vendor in the sales order itself. That's a feature I requested into it many times, uh, but uh, just never got them to really understand the concept of that. Uh, but uh, that would be kind of interesting. But so then we're going to go into uh, PO number and then we click on uh, copy and then we click on uh, save and close and hit yes. And then I go back into my original sales order and then I paste the other PO number, PO number 46 in there. And that pretty much lets me know uh, that this order, that this um, PO has already been, uh, we already created uh, a uh, open, we well, created POs for this uh, sales order. There's another um, interesting kind of trick here, and I'm gonna show you what it is. Uh, going on the same theme as using this custom field, let's say for example, in this uh, pool cover, the light blue, I'm gonna double click on that, and you would have to go into every single one of your, um, of your uh, items and go into that custom field, and where it says vendor PO number, type the word pending. Just type the word pending, uh, and you, you'll see this is going to make tons of sense. And then I'm going to click OK. Or actually, I, I couldn't because in this case, um, I forced this to be um, I forced this to be uh, numbers only. So if I force it to be numbers only, I'm just going to put a zero. OK, so then I'm going to click OK. Just because I, I'm never going to have a PO number zero. And I'll explain in a second why that's, that even matters. And then I go again, mo all my items, I'll choose a zero as a default. I'll pick the item and then notice that PO number comes in and there's a zero in there and there's a specific purpose to that. Then I'm going to click on save and then I'm going to click on uh, create purchase order and then I'm going to do just that one, last one, selected items, click OK and then select the pool cover, click OK and then I'm going to take that PO number here, copy it and then hit uh, save and close. And why is this important? Well, multiple things. Number one, if I'm sitting here and I'm looking at, uh, that first one was 45. I don't know where it defaulted to zero. So if I'm here and I'm looking at the sales order and I'm wondering, hmm, have all these items been ordered? Then I can use that vendor PO number uh, custom field just to know which ones have. If I wanted to see that PO, I know the PO numbers, so all I have to do is hit Control F, go into um, Advance, and then go into uh, Number, and go into Number here, and I can just type 45, 46, whatever it happens to be, click on Find, and this is going to find Purchase Order Number for me. I can double-click on that, 
and there is, voila, I can see my purchase order number. As an alternative as well, because we're following this process where the sales order number is being filled into that memo field, I can just take my sales order number, copy that, do a control F, go to advance, and then go into memo, I go into memo, and then in my advanced search memo, type my sales order number, click on find, and essentially, I can see every single purchase order associated with this uh, sales order. Uh, in addition to that, I'll show you one more thing. Uh, if you remember when we use this default zero as a vendor PO, and if I, so if I don't create the PO or don't update that field, I could always go into my uh, transaction detail report. Let me show you, I can create a transaction detail report and then I can go into all and I can go to filters and I can do transaction type. I can select a uh, sales order in this case and then I can go to detail type, detail level and do all except summary. And then under display, I'm gonna make sure that my vendor PO custom field is showing and you will see exactly what I mean by this and then click OK. And then I think I forgot one more thing. Let me go back to customize report and filters. I think I forgot to do posting status of uh, posting status uh, either because sales orders are non-posting. So I'm going to change it to either or non-posting and click OK. So essentially I have a list of all my uh, vendor PO numbers. And if I sort it by vendor PO number and then sort it by ascending, Right? I'm going to see all the blanks. In this case, just imagine all the blanks are zeros. All the ones that are zero are sort of an indication of items I still need to order. What's even cooler about that, I can click on Customize Report, click on Filters, and then type uh, Vendor PO, and then select that, and then just type a zero. Remember, we're going off the logic that we use zero as a default number, and then click OK, and all of a sudden, I got a, a report that I can call sales order with pending POs to create or something like that, right? So then if I wanted to have an active list memorized of all my sales orders in which I have not yet inputted a real vendor number other than the zero, I can essentially have a, a live list of all the things that are spending to order. This is an incredibly useful management tool for people that manage inventory, that manage open orders and that sort of thing. So, um, Asriel, thank you for your question. Uh, the question prompted a whole bunch of neurons in my brain and allowed me to show you this example. I think that if you actually put all these things together, it gives you some ideas or some other creative ways you can use QuickBooks to track sales orders and purchase orders and that type of thing. Uh, let's see, uh, Margo asks, what if the third item needed to be ordered from two different vendors? So my suggestion would be, and this is going back to for example, let's go back to, let's say, we're doing this purchase order number. I'm going to do a different item just so it becomes a little bit easier to kind of read. We'll do this cord 12G, and let's say we want to get 25 of them. But then you realize that you have to get five from vendor A and then 10, 20 from vendor B. What I would do, and it's a little bit annoying, you still can do it. What I would do is just split this into two lines. Just come here and click on copy line, go down, right click and paste line and just split them up and do five to one vendor and then uh, 20 to another vendor. Uh, unfortunately, it's a little bit annoying to do this, but at least, you know, it's, it's a way that then I can then separately enter my vendor PO numbers. Again, it would be nice to have a drop down menu in there that shows the preferred vendor or the vendor that you plan to buy this from. That's a feature that's not in QuickBooks. Trust me, I've been asking for this for years. And if it does come out in 2022, then you know why it came out, right? Because I've been pushing for that for a very long time. The vendor number, I mean, the PO number for now, it's the best uh, workaround I can think of, okay? Let's see what we have. Um, uh, Jolene says, your custom report for vendor uh, number only. I only want to see open sales orders. Uh, did you show that for all open and close? Good question. We'll go back to that report here. Okay. And did I close that report? I did. So let me go into reports, memorize reports, and then sales order with pending POs to create. Then I can just go to customize report, go into filters, and then go into, I believe it's paid status. 
page status and then do open. So I'll just do open, not close. Click on save and close. So these are my open POs. If I were to convert this PO into, a, into an invoice, I'm gonna double click on that and show you. I'm gonna create it into an invoice, select all, and then hit save and close. I'm doing this just to illustrate what happens to my report. Once I create it into an invoice, it goes away from my report. So the original report I did, I didn't add the uh, open close status for that. Now I've done it and that would be the way you do it. Okay, so Stacy says, is, are there any tricks to creating one PO from multiple sales orders? Unfortunately, Stacy, that's not available. So it's a manual process. You cannot create, um, you cannot tack on items from multiple sales orders into APO.